What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. I hope you are doing fantastic today. I am doing very, very well, and I'm very excited to be opening up a pack of Amonkhet, obviously a somewhat recent set. Uh, it does have a little bit of value in it. Things like the gods uh, are pretty good, actually, Hazaret being probably the best. Uh, but all of them are really good, and there are a few other cards in here that I would be excited to open. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if we're drafting the set. Uh, I did draft a good bit of this set. Uh, in fact, my favorite one that I did draft, my favorite deck, was actually just a mono red fling deck. Uh, pretty sweet, actually. It was really, really fun. But uh, we will go through every card, and our first one here is Tormenting Voice. It is a sorcery for one and a red, and as an additional cost to cast it, you must discard a card, uh, and then you draw two cards. So uh, I find this to be okay in a mono red aggressive strategy only because you're going to end up with extra lands most of the time. Uh, a lot of the times you really don't need all the lands you end up with in that deck. Uh, to be able to discard one of those for only two mana and then draw two cards, honestly, pretty much, uh, it's pretty worth it in my opinion. So, provides some much needed card draw in that deck, but obviously not a first pick. It's something we'd look to uh, pick up probably later in the pack. Uh, Supply Caravan is a 3-5 for 4 and a white. When it enters the battlefield, if you control a tapped creature, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior token with Vigilance. Uh, anything that kind of spits out a token along with it uh, is honestly, in my opinion, a leg up above a lot of other cards solely because it's immediate 2 for 1 value regardless of how strong the creatures are. Obviously, you want them to be as strong as possible. Uh, and this one's okay. It's a 3-5 five for 5, which isn't amazing, but you do get an additional 1-1 one, one ideally, uh, which means you're getting four a 4-6 four, worth creature uh, for only one uh, card, which is good. Uh, definitely better than Tormenting Voice. Probably not going to be our first pick, but it's definitely worth looking at. Uh, Dune Beetle is a 1-4 vanilla creature for 1 and a black. I find creatures like this with big butts and no power to be very, very, uh, very much a trap for new players. They think, well, it'll stall the game or something like that. And that's okay. It will do what you are expecting it to do, but it's not going to win you the game. And that's the big problem with it. I don't love it, to be honest. Uh, so really not much to say about it. Uh, Initiate's Companion is a 3-1 for 1 and a green. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, untap target creature or land. Uh, honestly, I found this to not be very good. It just dies so easily to so many things because it only has that one toughness. And a lot of times people are willing to trade up for this because it is a 3-1 for only 2. Uh, they figure, well, if I trade a 1 or a 2 drop for this, it's perfectly fine because I'm getting more value than they are. And they're probably right. So... Honestly, I find this card to be very not worth it unless you're already like very, very ahead when you play it. Uh, Painted Bluffs. Uh, this is a land desert, which is a key in this uh, set. You can tap it for one generic mana or you can pay one, tap it and add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, obviously something you'll want if you're in maybe a multicolored strategy. Uh, obviously tapping for one generic isn't great, but filtering into other colors is obviously fantastic. So if you find yourself in a three or four color deck for whatever reason, might be a good thing to have just so you can make sure you're filtering your lands. Uh, Bitterblade Warrior is a 2-2 for one and a green. Uh, you can exert Battleblade Warrior as it attacks, and then if you do, it gets plus one, plus zero, and gains death touch until the end of the turn. The exerted creature will not untap during your next untap step, exert being a very big mechanic in this set. Uh, one that we'll probably see a few more times in this pack. I really like this card, actually. Not only is it a 2 for 2, two, for two regardless, uh, but it also has the ability to be a 3-2 when it's attacking and get Death Touch, which just means people are probably not going to be very willing to block it. Uh, so honestly, so far, I like this pick uh, more than anything else. Uh, Violent Impact is a sorcery for three and a red. Destroy target artifact or land, and then this has cycling for two of any color, so you can discard it and then draw a card. Cycling is really, really good in my opinion because it takes cards like this, which are very much sideboard tech, and makes them somewhat okay in the main deck. So if you have to fill out your deck, uh, putting something like this in there is honestly okay because you can cycle it. Uh, if you don't have a target for it, just cycle it, draw yourself a card. It's perfectly fine in that scenario. Uh, obviously, the upside being if there's a particular artifact, which will be more likely than land in this set. 
But if there's an artifact or a land on the field that you really need to deal with, you have it main board. You don't have to worry about sideboarding for it. And then obviously if you don't, you cycle it. So it's fine. It's a, it's a playable card for sure. Definitely not one I'm looking to first pick, but it's not bad. Uh, Binding Mummy is a 2-2 for one and a white. Whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you may tap target artifact or creature. I find this card to be very, very good. <clears throat> Probably better than the warrior, honestly. Uh, being able to the, to early pick some of these uh, zombies is really, really key to getting into that tribal deck. Uh, there are a few tribes, actually, in this set, zombies being one of the biggest. And uh, it's really, really key to get this this card early because once you play a lot of zombies, you'll just be able to tap down their, their board and swing in for a lot of damage. So I really like this, I think, more than the warrior for sure. <clears throat> Uh, deci decision Paralysis, excuse me, is an instant for three and a blue tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures do not untap during their controller's next untap step. I find this card, card to be perfectly playable. It's a very good tempo swing on four. You can leave up a counter or something along those lines, and then if there's nothing that you feel is worth countering, just tap down a couple of creatures at the end of, uh, of their turn, and then you have a free pass on your next turn. So I find this to be good. It has less high of an upside uh, versus like the Binding Mummy for sure, but it will be good probably no matter what. Uh, I prefer to take the Mummy just in general, but it's not a bad card at all. Oh, here we go. Our first uncommon, Lord of the Accursed. It's a 2-3 for 2 and a black. Other zombies you control get plus 1, plus 1, and then you can pay 1 and a black, tap it, all other zombies gain menace until the end of the turn. This is very, very much a reason to be in the zombies deck, more so even than the Binding Mummy. Obviously, it's a lord, but on top of that, it makes it very difficult for the opponent to block all of the zombies that you're going to be uh, swinging at them with. And so, honestly, this is a great, great card. Definitely one that I'd be first picking. <clears throat> uh, Grave Digger is a 2-2 for 3 and a black. When it enters the battlefield, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, tickle in my throat there. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, this is a great card. Uh, not only is it a zombie, but it also returns and gives you some recursion for other cards. I actually just played a sealed pool uh, with Corset 2020 where I was in a green-black deck, and this was absolutely a, an all-star. Uh, being able to pull back your biggest bomb is just huge. Uh, if you got this along with the Lord of the Accursed, it's even better because you're able to pull back that Lord of the Accursed and hopefully play it very soon after and just pump everything up. So absolutely love it in this set. Definitely not more than the Lord of the Accursed, though if that was not in the pack, this might be up there as one of the better cards for sure. Uh, Shadow Storm Vizier is a 1-3 for a blue and a black. It has flying, and then whenever you cycle or discard a card, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. This is a very good card as well. Cycling and discarding, both are very, very important in this set. You're going to see a lot of stuff like that. <coughs> uh, so to be able to get a little bit of a buff out of it on one of your early game creatures is great. Not only that, but it does have flying, so it's going to be very easy to swing in with this uh, after you've powered it up to probably less, uh, less blockers than you normally would have. So very, very good, but considering what's in the rest of the pack, I would go for the Lord of the Accursed just because... That's such a good flagship card for that Zombies deck. It also leaves you a little more open in terms of colors. It's it's only a black creature, whereas this is a blue-black creature. Obviously, it's more specific in that it is a tribal card, but uh, I prefer that over the Vizier for sure. And then our rare here is Cut to Ribbons. So Sorcery for uh, one and a red. Cut deals four damage to target creature. Obviously, a great removal spell. And then Ribbons has Aftermath, so uh, X2 black, uh, cast this spell only from your graveyard and then you exile it, and each opponent loses X life. Uh, both of the, these effects are actually very, very good. Uh, I don't know if they're better than taking the Lord of the Accursed. Probably so, honestly. Uh, it's just so good, and it leaves you a little more open uh, because it's good in any deck. So I think I would take this. And then we do have another Supply Caravan, actually, in Foil our full art land, and then our token. I think Cut to Ribbons is honestly the pick. It just leaves you so open uh, in terms of you can go into any uh, any deck and it's going to be good. Uh, Lord of the Accursed obviously is much more key to uh, the Zombies deck. 
and I would like to pick that, but it's really hard to pass up that cut to ribbons. So feel free to let me know in the comments section below what you would pick. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.